this will change your life. So go ahead and ignite your own drive for better. Another self-improvement lunatic. What did you say? Ah, what the hell? Sorry about the dwarf. It's a gnome. Anyway, you were saying something negative about self-improvement. Right, yes, I think you should jump back wherever you came from. Seriously, dude, why should I care about any of this self-improvement talk? I am fine. I don't need to do or change anything in my life. Yeah, I can tell. Listen, I get that. It might seem like not doing anything may save you from pain of potential failure and disappointment. But this is an illusion. Inaction comes with opportunity costs, debilitating long-term costs. You become what you repeatedly do. By avoiding change, you do not get stability, you get stagnation. But it's even worse than that. Time flies, so the only constant in life is change. And tiny daily changes turn into exponential annual changes. So this is why with each new year, some people appear to have more and more good things in life while others less and less. The rich are getting richer, poor are getting poorer, you get the point. And this is not limited to material situation and health or events and experiences in people's lives. You probably heard about brain plasticity and you know that it explains how brain changes by experiences. What most people don't know is that by their own behaviors, this brain plasticity can also lead to brain rigidity. It can lead to development of stubborn rigid habits that could prevent future positive changes from occurring and even limit future's ability to learn. With passing time, these accumulated changes mean that your inaction, your stagnation, can turn into a slow downward spiral. Your life could become a trap where things are getting progressively worse. We're talking about decreasing health, increasing waistline, meaningless, soul-killing job, burnout, growing disappointment when you look at the mirror, and a life of quiet desperation. All happening while some other people seem to be going completely different routes, where things seem to be going progressively better for them. Damn, this sounds a bit scary. Tell me something, when was the last time you woke up and you felt energized, excited for your day, free of worries, when you felt truly alive. I don't remember really. Well, if it wasn't sometime this week, or maybe even today, there is some room for improvement. When you put it this way, well, maybe I should start caring a little bit. By the way, where did your upbeat optimism go? Oh, don't worry, it's still there. It's just superimposed on my hyper-realism. My message is ultimately very positive. With some changes in your life, you can start an upward spiral or virtuous cycle of change in your life where things are getting progressively better with time. You can change your current trajectory of life at any time. It's never too late to be a late bloomer. But if you start sooner, you're more likely to have better results. But of course, no one has completely changed change just with a snap of the fingers. Permanent changes in your life require significant revisions to your core beliefs about the world and about yourself. These are affected both by your hardware, your current physical brain, and your software, your attitudes, beliefs, values, etc. For many people, their current software makes it extremely hard to make an efficient change. Their software is like an old Windows, with multiple apps launching at startup, which is constantly crashing, and their browsers are plagued by multiple pop-ups everywhere. And ensuring your constant distraction. I can help you improve your software with content of my videos so that you can get more clarity, more control, and more freedom to act efficiently and get the results you want. Okay, cool, that sounds good. But wait a second, seriously, why should I care what you are saying? And who are you anyway? And why should I even listen to a loser without a Lamborghini? I mean, I know you don't have it. Otherwise, you would record your videos in your garage in front of your Lambo. <laughs> good one. Yes, I understand your concerns. There are plenty of quacks in the self-improvement niche. Who am I? My name is Peter Parker. And you're right, I don't have a Lambo. But since you mentioned that, I spent several years in Dubai where I got to meet not only a lot of guys with multiple Lambos and private jets, but even big guys, those that are hundreds or even thousand times richer. I mean, true billionaires, not some imposters renting a Lambo to shoot a video. I had a frank conversation with one of those guys who got to know me well. After a few drinks, he said that he would gladly take my life over his if he could only swap our lives. Not sure if this lends any credibility to my words though. Cool hanging out with billionaires. It must have been nice for you to be born in privilege and easy life. And now you go around telling people they should be just as happy as you are. Yes, I am very grateful to my parents for everything they did for me and gave me whatever little they had. I come from a working class family. My parents were born on countryside, didn't have access to fancy education. My father started working as a miner in a coal mine when he was 17 and continued until his health was destroyed. My mother was a stay-at-home mom. I did not have access to financial, social, cultural, educational, 
additional capital to start with. And I was born in a communist country where sometimes you have to wait for hours in line to get basic necessities like coffee or toilet paper. Moreover, I only learned English in my 20s. That obviously means that I missed my critical period for language development, hence my exotic accent. And by the way, if that bothers you, you can always turn on captions or subtitles. Good to know. All right, so what is it then? Another story of the prodigy that smoothly sailed through the Ivy League or Oxbridge to land a lucrative career and an easy life. A guy who can't understand why others are failing so badly, why life is so easy for him. Well, if you must know, I did apply to Cambridge University, but was rejected because of my poor grades in high school. That was because I skipped school a lot, as I didn't have access to fancy mentors who could put me on the right track. I had dysfunctional habits, poor emotional regulation, I was listening to heavy metal music, spending countless hours playing computer games. I was getting sick all the time, had vast number of allergies, few friends, no girlfriend, and constantly frustrated and gloomy. I was suffering from what a psychiatrist using DSM-6 would diagnose as a loser syndrome. <laughs> Yeah, talking about overdiagnosis in DSM. These days, they will probably overmedicate you, forcing you to pop multiple pills a day. Anyway, you were talking about your past misery. My life's trajectory was heading in a wrong direction, and I knew I needed to make major changes in my life. But first, you need to understand how things work to make good changes. So I rediscovered education and science. I started with understanding the world with its society and economy, and then got hooked on behavioral sciences, and then got a couple master's degrees in psychology and applied science. I thought about doing a PhD, but I already got the most valuable skills I needed. Advanced statistics and ability to design and critical evaluate research studies. Besides, after some soul searching, I realized that I initially wanted to get a PhD so that I could add few special letters in front of my name. And people would think that I'm smart. And that's of course childish, so I gave that idea up. Psychology. Interesting. Any quick takes on what popular self-improvement advice to avoid? Sure. Just be yourself. Follow your passion. Love yourself. Focus on your strengths. Manifest or attract money. Be happy or find happiness. Yeah, have you looked behind the sofa? What? Have you looked behind the sofa? Maybe you can find your happiness over there. <laughs> Good one. But all this advice sounds like they're true. Right, they do have an element of truthiness about them. But they are better avoided, with some small exceptions. Now don't get me wrong, it doesn't mean that all popular self-improvement advice is bad. In fact, I read an awful lot of self-improvement books, and some of them contain valuable advice that can work. The problem is, all those books do are selling you ideas that sound like they are true, and most of them don't have any real data to back their statements up. If you get 10 random self-improvement ideas from several books, two of them could be helpful, five of them could be completely ineffective and three of them could actually be bad for you and you can't tell which one is which one so if you apply all of them to your life you will actually be worse off than a person that does nothing and yet it could be worse still there are also self-improvement gurus creating religious cult-like groups of followers or others telling you to put years of efforts to climb that one specific ladder and once you get to the top you realize there's absolutely nothing out there you've been climbing the wrong ladder all this time i knew it i shouldn't care or change anything. I should just ignore all that self-improvement junk. <laughs> no. Instead of applying 10 shaky self-improvement advice, you could apply just one that has been proven to work and stick with it. And your life would be improved forever by a small bit. And you should climb the right ladder, of course. The key is to know the difference. All right, smartass. So if what you're saying is true, you should be some kind of a guru living in a nirvana happiness state by now. Well, you don't have a Lambo in your garage, so what do you have to show for yourself? No, I'm not guru or a picture-perfect individual. And I don't like to brag. Don't you trust science? Science experiments follow strict methods. Science is great, but I need to see that you do not only talk the talk, but also walk the walk. So, are you just another armchair philosopher? You mentioned that some filthy rich guy wanted your life, but he could just be crazy. Fair enough. I already talked about where I started. Since that time, I lived and worked in US, Poland, London, Dubai, Ireland, and right now, I am in a beautiful place in Canada. I've got a house in a small town by the ocean, which just feels amazing. 
I walk my dog by the beach daily, breathing in the fresh ocean air. I've got a wonderful job with great and smart people. My director is awesome. I've been married for more than a decade now. And even though that not every single day was rosy, we have never been in a better spot than right now. Sonia is absolutely amazing and I wouldn't be the person I am without her. And we're expecting a baby girl soon, so it's an exciting time for us. My health has never been better, despite the fact that I am 41 right now. I haven't been sick in five years. No flu, no cold, no viruses. Even COVID didn't touch me, despite the fact that Sonia had it. I no longer have any symptoms of allergies. My body's physical markers are so good that at this point, my expected length of life is 102 years. I started running several years ago in my mid-30s, and last year, I won an award for the fastest runner in my age group in six races. I was competing with guys half my age for podium places. I couldn't swim only a few years ago, and just recently, I have finished an Ironman triathlon race, which is 226 kilometers or 140 miles. Every day, when right, I wake right, up, that's enough. There just might be something to what you say. Okay, where do I start? I have a long list of topics to cover in my videos to help you out. If the videos are not out yet, it's best to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you'll never miss a video when it is released. Remember, you do not find a happy life you make it. Awesome, I am going to check your other videos right now. Thanks everyone for watching this video. Do let me know what you think about this video in your comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, drop a like for the algorithm. This is the best way to support this channel. See you soon in another one of my videos.